Throughout the Gulf of Mexico, there's a lot of sinkholes, um, springs, a lot of people call them. Basically areas that if you were on land and you had the ground fall out beneath you and there's a giant hole. That's happened throughout the Gulf of Mexico and it's led to some pretty awesome fishing spots. Uh, this video is from one that's in about 130, maybe 140 feet of water, somewhere right around there. And I've got two pretty good looks at it when I've been sending the camera down. Uh, they're about four years apart. This one's more recent, uh, in the springtime of 2020 when the water was, was pretty clean before it started raining a lot. So as the camera's going down, I try to send it down fairly slow when I'm on some of these springs, just because you can get a lot of fish up in the water column. So here you see a couple amberjack. And above the springs, you, you'll, you'll see a lot of amberjack. You might see some African pompano. You might see some permit. Uh, snapper could be up in the water column, so it's kind of a good to, to if you're you know sending down the camera, to send it down slower if you want to look at it again later. So as it's going down, you can start to see this big black spot, and that is the hole. We are sitting uh, on the road end just in front of it, and so the camera's going down here. You can see a little bit of hard bottom around it, and now it starts to come into to focus. So this hole in the bottom I'm not even quite sure how deep it goes because you can't see it in any of the videos I don't know anybody that's dove this particular spring there are some that go from you know 120 feet down to 400 feet and, and people have never actually been to the end of it so this could go down you know that deep it could go down 20 30 feet the depth finder kind of gets cut off it doesn't show exactly how deep it is so it's 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 pretty interesting so going down lower, one of the first big fish you see is a Goliath grouper, and he's just chilling on the bottom. These things can become a little bit of a pain when you're, you know, bottom fishing the edges of the the, the sinkholes. Uh, just like a wreck, they love this big, you know, open bottom with a lot of fish, just because it provides an easy meal for them. So hit the bottom here, lots of good, you know, looking rocks. Um, there's a Goliath, there's a Lane Snapper that you saw at the beginning in, beginning there. Um, there's lots of Vermilion Snapper, Bee Liners, there's a Mangrove Snapper. It's a lot of different snapper species. Um, you'll see some Scamp Grouper on, on springs like this from time to time. The deeper you go, the more Scamps you'll see and, and bigger Scamps when you're, when you're fishing sinkholes. And uh, definitely some some varieties of fish. So now it's come around again. You can see here's the, the edge of the, the hole. It's pretty big area. If I had to guess, I'd say this is uh, probably about half a soccer field. It's it's pretty large in terms of the the opening, um, and it's you know steep walls. Who knows exactly how deep it goes? I I don't. I don't know anybody that's you know like I said that's dove it, but it's it's got some some awesome stuff. So there's some yellowtail snapper. There is a scamp grouper right there. And when we're fishing something like this, we're chumming pretty heavy back behind the boat trying to get the snapper up off the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of times there'll be a barracuda or, you know, other kind of sharks, stuff that's looking to, to take your fish if you're hooking them off the bottom. By chumming, you get them up in the water column. It gives you a little better shot. Um, the current was moving pretty good on this particular day, so we didn't get a whole lot of, you know, mid-level column action but we were actually f hooking some fish on the bottom some uh some snapper yellowtails and, and mangoes while we were just bottom fishing um and you can see in the video they they kind of are sitting right on the bottom there's you know all kinds of life as the camera just hovering you know a few feet off the bottom so let me just speed up a little bit here um, so there's more bee liners just kind of looking at the camera. Um, there's a big mangrove snapper. There's some, you know, decent size, probably 15, 16 inch mangrove snapper. Nothing, nothing too, too huge in terms of mangrove snapper on this spot. Um, we don't get a lot of gag or red grouper on these big holes. I think a lot of the times, um, they're, you know, might be overfished or just too much pressure. Uh, I have seen other boats fish this. Most of the springs are, are known by people. And they'll get some some decent pressure. Um, also, the 
the I think the the grouper if they're gonna be there they're probably you know sitting more on the edges of the holes and not necessarily out in the the hard bottom area like this, and so it's gonna be hard to to see them when they've got so much that they can hide in in terms of the the hole that's back here. So there's a goliath again. So I'm, I'm thinking if there are grouper they're gonna be more in the holes you know cracks right along the edges of it. Um, that's a that's a pretty big goliath too. And he's, you know, definitely cruising. And so let me uh, just go back to the beginning real quick. So I would guess if there's grouper, you can kind of see there's like an edge right here, a little ledge where you know, it's a crack that goes down and in. That's probably more li more likely where the grouper would be sitting if they were on a spot like this, not out here in the open. Because um, they're also concerned about, you know, hey, Mr. Goliath grouper might try to eat me. So the first time I filmed this, let me go to my other video. This was back in 2015 or 2016. Um, so here's the camera going down. I got a lot of footage just that just kind of let it sit down there for a while. This was, you know, back when I was very nervous about sending a camera down because I didn't know, you know, hey, are sharks going to try to eat it? Um, what's kind of going to happen? So when I did get it down there, I wanted to get as much footage as possible. And I would send it down very slowly, which you can kind of see is happening here. Um, so same deal. This was in, I believe, July. So this was when the rains had started. You can already tell the difference in water clarity. Just kind of got a little murkiness to it versus that springtime day where the water was super clean. So lots of vermilion snapper, lots of yellowtail snapper. We actually did get the yellowtail snapper chummed up this day. And uh, we got, you know, probably about a dozen 18 of them and there's mr goliath and here's an interesting thing i don't know if it'll show with the the youtube there's a fishing line right here that he's got stuck in his mouth from obviously eating somebody else's fish and so there's a line there there's two of them on him and there's a line there and so as he's swimming or swimming away this line's still going still going I'll try to circle right there. Still going. So he obviously broke somebody off pretty high up. And there is the end of the line. So that's probably about 30 or 40 feet of line that he's still got hanging out of his mouth. Um, but you can see a lot of fish here. Lots of yellowtail snapper. I love fishing these springs for yellowtail snapper in the Gulf. It's, it's, especially if you can get them chummed up. It's, uh, it's very tricky to do. Your timing has to be pretty good. And so there you can see the hole once again. A lot of mangrove snapper were here on this day. Obviously a lot of vermilion snapper. And then there's a scamp grouper. So good variety of fish. Um, a lot of different different things that were here. A lot a lot fishier than the, the, the springtime when we were there. I don't know exactly why that is. Some days obviously spots hold more fish than other days. But there's a lot more in, in this camera shot than that original one. Um, there you can see the edge of the hole again. The glass just kind of patrolling around the edge. I When we started chumming the snapper up, when we were hooking them, you know, 30, 40 feet below the boat, we could see the Goliath coming all the way up to, to try to eat what we were, what we had been hooking. Which uh, makes it a little more difficult. You, you've got to put a lot of heat on the, the, the fish to get them in the boat. Normally this depth, 130, 140 feet, there's a lot of red snapper out in the Gulf, um, but not here. I think they're probably, you know, more on that flat hard bottom near near this spot versus actually on the, the big sinkhole itself. So I'll just kind of let this play through so people can see. You know, there's that sinkhole once again. You can, you can tell the other video you could see pretty far. This one you can't quite see exactly how big it is. Um, but it's a, a pretty cool look at it. Uh, I love these you know, sinkholes. There's, there's all kinds of them in the Gulf of Mexico. If you don't have them, I mean, there's some w more well-known ones out there that you can certainly find. Uh, I don't like to, to share that information too much just because it's for me it's more fun to, to explore myself and, and try to find some of my own stuff. Um, so, so lots of amberjack, obviously, just like a wreck or anything. There's some almaco jacks as well. You're gonna find your your jackfish, your you know all that's 
same species that you would on a wreck, you can kind of almost guarantee you're, are going to be on a spring as well. Um, there's some, uh, actually, I don't think I ever noticed this before. That is a giant mangrove snapper, unless it's a, like a baby Kubera. I always, when there's this much going on on a, a shot, no, I see new stuff all the time. So right there, that one right there, that is a giant mangrove snapper, actually. So yeah, I never noticed that before. There's a couple of them. There's another one there. So real, real big ones. So this uh, is a spot I think would be really cool to fish at night, um, especially seeing all these yellowtail and mangrove snapper, because then you can get them pretty high up in the water column. The, the glass tend to be a little more forgiving at night. Um especially if people have been fishing them all day. you know, I don't know if they ever truly fill up. You can see somebody's fishing line right there. That might be the glass sitting above the camera again. There's a fishing line right there. Um, but, yeah, the, the nighttime snapper action, especially in the summertime and the, in the warmer months, you can get a lot of good mangrove yellowtail snapper um, kind of chummed up. So scamp grouper, pretty much the same as the that you'll see on these uh bigger structures out in the gulf um pretty cool looking reef fish right there i think those are butterfly fish so cool look at uh you know what's going to be out there there were some uh lion fish as well just a whole variety of of life um pretty cool looking spot so I'm, i'll let this play out if you want to watch feel free um but i just want to kind of share you know what a what a giant sinkhole looks like in the gulf of mexico people ask me all the time and I'm like well I've got some videos of it I don't know exactly what the bottom of them looks like but I can show you what the the surface and the the hole of it looks like and there's a lionfish right there as well need to get rid of those um so yeah I hope you enjoyed thank you very much